Good morning, folks. We're focused on the filament action on the south. We've already seen the first eruption, the largest, but there was another right afterwards blocked by the Earth eclipsing the satellite. We'll look at that again in a second. And then, in the same location of the sun, another one snaps. The one cut off by the eclipse was seen lifting before the blackout, and then is gone with the solar tsunami canyon of fire left in its place. NASA's Enlil spiral is now updated and predicts impact from the largest CME. Both NASA and NOAA's original analyses suggested impact September 8th, but I bet we detect the impact a day earlier. Spaceweathernews.com, and we're looking at bedtime for the sun. No solar flaring, and even though we have marginally more sunspots, it is still a puny showing for the umbras. The solar wind is unsteady, presenting numerous density and speed spikes with temperature swings of tens of thousands of degrees. No more geomagnetic storms occurred, but instability and unrest prevail. Quake Watch is rising back up from hitting a low index level. It's on the incoming coronal hole, and just west of yesterday's Alaska swarm, a 5.9 struck that hit magnitude 6 or higher on a number of human-confirmed seismic stations. NASA's Earth Observatory with a shot of the day comparing 1984 and 2015 in Al Ain in the UAE. Let's also take a look at flip-flop temperature situation from what has prevailed in the U.S. recently and identify the two reasons why it is so. First, the jet stream is dipping down to the west and shooting back up in the east. As an atmospheric divider, the cold air can slide down in the west and the hotter air advances north in the east up to the jet stream wall. But we also have two northern lows working together to yank heat up the central states, which then drives up into eastern Canada. And on a shorter and smaller but more drastic scale, the lows themselves drive extreme temperature shifts, which makes sense when you see the wind drive and realize they all follow that same pattern. We also have an alert for holiday beachgoers in the east. We have strong riptide conditions this weekend, so be careful, especially with kids and pets. Featured content today is yesterday's Fly on the Wall episode. For those who have to make tough choices about their time and what to watch on the site, and who can't yet dive in headfirst to all the stuff we do, you can save the 70 minutes. This is for the most active, most dedicated, and most enthusiastic among us those fighting battles, and knowing those of us to which it applies, it will require your patience and calm. 41 days to observing the frontier. Get your tickets for Pittsburgh October 17th and 18th. We also have our Phoenix conference in January. Come hang out with us and hear firsthand about the crest of the wave. We've got your tropical activity, top viewer locations, current conditions, and shots of our star to close. It's 6.25 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.